Welcome to our review on classification systems. So the first thing we need to do is understand what we mean by the term classification. So when we talk about classification, we're talking about sorting organisms into groups based on their similar characteristics. Now, you might wonder why on earth would scientists bother doing such a thing? And there are three key reasons behind it. First one is to help us identify species. The second is to allow us to predict characteristics that they may have. And the third is to actually show these evolutionary links between different species. So when we're talking about classification, what we have are seven taxonomic levels and they're shown there for you. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now, it's a bit tricky to remember those terms just randomly like that. So it's always good to try to write your own little mnemonic. So a little rhyme that's going to help you remember it using the first letter of each word. So if we actually look at one of those sections of classification, the kingdoms, then every single living thing on planet Earth can be divided up into one of five kingdoms. So they're either plants, animals, fungi, protoctista or prokaryotes. Now, the last step of classification is species. And one of the questions I used to love asking for two marks was the definition of the term species. So in order to get two marks, should it come up again, then it is a group of organisms which are able to reproduce that will get your first mark. And the second one is for saying to produce fertile offspring. So it's a group of organisms which can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. And if you write that, you'll get two marks. So what we actually have are two classification systems we could use. The first one is called artificial classification. Now, the artificial classification system uses these observable characteristics, the things you can actually see. Does it have two legs or four legs? Does it have wings? Things like that. It doesn't consider any evolutionary relationships. And there are some key problems with using the artificial classification system. And the key one is if you look at the little picture in the bottom left there, that's of a species called the Archaeopteryx. It's extinct. It doesn't run around today, as you probably have guessed. But when you look at that, and we look at the actual features we can see, it's got wings, so it should be a bird. But if we look at its head, it has no beak, it looks more like a reptile. So it throws up that question of where do you put things like that? The second classification system is the natural classification system. Now this is based on evolutionary relationships which have been determined by analyzing the DNA of different species. So what we actually do here is carry out this study called phylogeny, which is basically where we're looking at evolutionary links through studying the DNA. So we look and see how similar the DNA actually is. And from that, we can then build up this family tree. And what we can see in the right hand side there is just showing us our human family tree, if you like. So Homo sapiens is right at the top there in the right hand side. And that's modern humans. So that's what we are today. And as you come down, you can see all the earlier incarnations of humans in their evolutionary lifetime. And at the very bottom, you can see that there was actually this point where chimpanzees have branched off from our human family line. So this is something that we've discovered by carrying out all these studies on DNA and then by working out where organisms get placed based on how similar the DNA is to one another.